konnichiwa this is davide uh, from the google neon live show this is the episode number 16 and today we are with Haley. hi what are we going to talk about today Haley? actually we're going to be talking about bringing a pet to japan from your home country and why can we talk about it because i did it i brought my cat from america to and japan. we we're going to go through the whole process and give you a lot of information in case guys you you have a pet and you are also thinking to living and studying in japan so please stay tuned we will be live very soon <music> Hey guys! Um, so my name is Haley, as Davide said. I am new at Gogo Nihon. I work in the marketing department. Um, but today we'll actually, as we said, talk about bringing a pet to Japan. And the reason that we're going to talk about this is because I actually did it. Um, it is kind of a long process, as maybe you've heard if you're serious about doing this, but today I'm going to be explaining 10 basic steps that you'll need to follow in order to get your pet over here to Japan. That's amazing. And um, the reason why we decided to do this live show is because many people in the past have inquired Gogo Nihon about, you know, I have a pet, but I still want to live and study in Japan. Uh, can you help me, guys? And then, of course, we've been uh, as, helpful, as helpful as we could. Uh, giving one-to-one -one advices, but we think that if we make a, uh, a content like this, people can already uh, get started, first of all, understanding what's important and also be prepared because it requires time, as we will see. Yes, uh, So we, we are going to go through uh, all the steps. And guys, don't forget that we are live on Facebook uh, and we're also going to put this video on YouTube after this, uh, this live show. So you will be able to comment right now if you have questions about... Uh, the process that Ailey will go through and also if you see the recorded video at any time you can ask us question and don't forget that also if you have any other question about living and studying in Japan you can always reach Google Nihon at info at googlenihon.com uh, but before we get started I want to try to do something fun this time since both of us have a pet and both of us have a cat uh, we want to first of all ask you guys uh, to uh, send a photo of your pet so if you have any pet you have send a photo of your pet in the uh, in the comments so just attach the photo of your pets and we will get started so i will first uh, um, i'm gonna do it right now so i will first uh, write a comment uh, of okay i just found out that during the live show you may not be able to uh, send a photo so that could be uh, hard for me to to do so i will uh, while while uh, Haley will explain the procedure, I will try to to attach the photo of uh, of our pet. Sure. But you guys, after you see this video, absolutely uh, send a comment with a photo of your pet uh, on Facebook and, and YouTube as well, and then we will be just nice uh, something to share, and we will actually post our uh, pet's photo after this uh, uh, this live streaming. Okay, so Haley, let's yeah. get started with um, with the steps and uh, with the explanation of what is needed to do in order to bring your pet to Japan. Okay, so. Um, first of all, it depends on which country you're coming from. Um, there are actually what what are referred to as designated countries or designated regions that the process is much easier if you're from those places. It's only six regions. They are Iceland, Australia, New Zealand, Fiji Islands, Hawaii, and Guam. So if you're not from any of those places, then you're going to be following the same procedure I did. I'm from America, which is not a designated region. Um, and it's a little bit more complicated for us, unfortunately, but you can do it. Um, I did it, so you can. Um, there are four things you need to make sure of before you start this process, though. The first thing is that um, your departure date for when you are going to Japan is at least nine months from when you start the process. Um, if, you're, if you're cutting it very, very close, it's possible to do it in eight but you definitely want to make sure you have at least nine months. So if, you're, if your departure date to Japan is less than that, is sooner than that, then unfortunately you may have to put your pet in a quarantine in Japan, mm. which is kind of the whole point of this process. You're avoiding the quarantine right. by, by doing all of this. So um, you want to make sure you have at least nine months. The second thing that you need to make sure you have is enough money to be able to complete this process because it's a lot of vet visits, a lot of sending things back and forth, um, and so what's recommended is that you have about 1,000 US dollars. Mm. Um, it really can fluctuate because it really depends on the vet fees, um, how far you'll have to send things to depending on where you live, which country you're in, things like that. Um, you'll also need to make sure that you are able to find accommodation in Japan after you bring mm. your pet here. 
because yeah. it's very difficult to find yes. um, accommodation for, that allows pets, mm. um, especially if you have a large dog. That's going to be something that's particularly difficult. Um, if you have a cat or a small dog, then it's it's a little bit easier. It can still be difficult, but that's a big thing that you need to make sure that you're able to do before mm. you take this on. Um, and then the last thing that you need to make sure of is that your pet is at least three months old and that it is in good health because um, there are certain points in the process where your pet is being inspected. And if it's not healthy, then that can kind of stop the process dead in its tracks. Because again, that's the whole point is that they're making sure that your pet is healthy enough to be able to live in Japan. So those are the four things that you need to make sure of before you even begin um, the process. Okay, so that's really already some good information that I think it's very hard to find online. If you, if you try to search for this information, it's very confusing and I believe you went uh, through this process most mostly by yourself. Oh, yes. uh, you also came through Gogonion and of course Gogonion gave you uh, the necessary support but it was a lot of work you had to do by yourself because you know there is no way Gogonion can get the vet visit yes, you uh, have in, to in do your it country. Yourself, you have to really, do yourself. You really so do. What, what is important for you guys right now when you're still in your country is that if you are not from Iceland, Australia, New Zealand, Fiji Island, Hawaii and Guam, which probably you are not, uh, maybe we have some Australian and New Zealanders uh, maybe some Hawaiian sometimes coming with Gogonion, but uh, you know most of the people watching us are not unfortunately from those countries. You need to go through the long process. So you're from, so if you're from the United States, if from, if you're from Europe except Iceland, um, you have to go through the to the full process that Ailey will uh, will give you more details uh, in the rest of this uh, live show. And you need to know that you need to start preparing nine months in advance. So although we tell students that uh, you need six months to prepare to come to Japan and you need six months to start your visa application, etc. In case you want to bring your pet to Japan, you need to put nine months in your mind. So uh, we're doing this live show in June. That would be probably uh, in April 2018 start in your case, uh, as early as you can do. And you want to do all the procedure in the right way because you don't want to have the risk that your pet will, will be put in the quarantine in Japan, which right. I think is something no one wants. no one wants and yeah. no pets especially want right. want to do if you tell your pets it's gonna hide somewhere it's not gonna <laughs> want to go to japan like, Never for sure. mind. yes yeah. yes um so guys as 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 you as always we are in uh, uh facebook live and you can ask comments so if you have any questions regarding the procedure if you want to share what your pet uh, what's your pet and you you know you want to you want to maybe ask some specific question feel free to do right now during the live show on or even after uh, with the comments there is a uh, uh, renee that says she was very curious about the, this topic actually i want to say hi to renee she was one of our former student oh. uh, short-term student maybe back to f 2012 i would say like very long time ago oh, she was awesome. uh, she's from america as well oh. uh, so i remember renee hi renee and um, and I really hope this is very helpful for everyone because we're going to give you a lot of information about uh, bringing your pet to Japan. So um, let's go back to the process. So l please let us know uh, what did you actually do uh, at that time and how was the process step okay. by step? OK, so I'll be giving you a very brief overview, which I think is is most useful when you're just finding out about the process. There is an official website which we listed in the first comment under this post. Um, it's called MAF, is the organization in Japan that really organizes this whole process. So that has all of the really hard details and all of the really specific things that you'll definitely need to check and you'll, you'll need to refer to as you're doing this. But I'll give you 10 basic steps. Um, the very first one that you would if, if you're serious about about bringing your pet to Japan and you're wanting to come to Japan in about nine months, then the first thing you need to do is take your pet to the vet and have it microchipped. Um, if it's already microchipped, then it's probably okay, but there are certain standards that it has to meet um, that are on that website that I mentioned. So just if your pet already has a microchip, then you need to go on the website and make sure it already meets those standards. If not, you'll need to get a microchip. And in that same vet visit, you, you can also get the very first rabies vaccine that you'll need. Um, so you can do both of those together, um, but it's kind of, you, you need to make sure that you do the microchip first, mm. technically. Okay, so <laughs> microchip first and then vaccine yes, after. Yes, even, even if it's literally one before the other, just make sure you do the microchip first. Okay. And you know, they're, they're just kind of, because the whole point of having the microchip first is that from this point on, they're, they're able to see. Everything is registered. Otherwise, yes. you, you miss the recording of, of the fact you had the vaccine. Yes, right? and you like need, yeah. you're able to see that it was actually this pet that important. had the rabies okay. and, and things like that. So microchip and rabies vaccine, that's the first thing you'll do. 
And after that, you actually have to wait a month, technically 31 days, mm. before you can move on to the third step. Um, and in those 31 days, I would definitely recommend researching the next things that you'll have to do because the next little chunk of steps that you'll have to do is really kind of three things back to back mm. and it can be very busy. Okay. So, um, in the 31 days, I would recommend researching the blood test facility where you'll have to send your pet's blood to. Mm. Um, so you'll, ha you'll actually have to send your pet's blood to be tested for rabies antibodies. Mm. Um, and it has to have antibodies that are a certain amount mm. so you need to research where that is and how you're going to get the blood there before you're in the situation because once you draw the blood you have to send it immediately right you so can't you wait to, the blood like yeah. forever so and you have to figure it out beforehand you need to be prepared before you actually and draw that the really blood. depends where you live because i believe you want to find the closest or the easier yeah. to send you know and i think in america there's only one. Oh. i think so probably one per country Probably. Maybe. I mean, it really yeah. depends. That, I, that's I the actually, thing, right? It depends on the country. On the website, it said that there there might be some cases where there actually isn't one in your country and you may have to send it out of the country. Okay. So I'm fortunate enough that at least there was one in my country. I used the, um, the one in Kansas, hmm. which I'm sure if you're doing this process, I think that's the only one. That's the only one you need to send. And then you send by, by post? Like, yes. How, how does it work? I, actually, okay, so let's back it up just a little bit. So like after the 31 days, you can get the second rabies vaccine. So you'll get the second rabies vaccine and in the same t the same vet visit, you can also have the blood drawn. But again, obviously make sure you do the rabies vaccine and then the blood drawn, because that's the whole point is that both of the rabies vaccines are in the blood and then you draw it, right? So, okay. then, so yes. then, then you draw the blood and then you'll have to send it. And vets will charge you a lot to send the blood. It depends on the vet, of mm. course, but Typically, the vet will charge you a lot of money to send the blood away, mm. so like hundreds of dollars. Mm. So if you're prepared and you want to do that, that would be the easiest. But I actually sent it myself mm. just because it was it was about three hundred dollars cheaper. Mm. So I actually literally had the test tube of her blood, and I uh, put had ice packs in it, and I had it in the um, like the styrofoam box, and I sent it where it needed to go. And you have a you have a specific um, postage stamp mm. that you'll have to print off to you know, make sure when you're doing the process, again, mm. just refer to the website, but basically you'll be sending the blood off to be tested to make sure that they have enough of a resistance to rabies. Because the whole point of this process is because Japan doesn't have rabies. There is no, rabies doesn't exist in Japan. So they're trying to avoid bringing it into their country. So if, if you're coming from a country that has rabies, that's why we do all of this to make sure. Okay. And that's also why there are a few countries that we mentioned before that are maybe exempted from this process because there is no rabies there exactly. too. So exactly. on, in those countries, there is no rabies and then they're exempted in case, you know, most of other countries, there is cases of rabies. So they want to make sure that the dog you, uh, or, or pet that you bring to Japan doesn't have it. That's why you need to go through this exactly. uh, process. Okay, so, but, but you know, it, it's possible. That's the thing we are trying to, to give you guys. Uh, it's possible, but be aware, it's not a simple process, as simple as I apply for a language school, I got a student visa, now I, I just ask my airline if I can bring my <laughs> pet and that's done. You actually need to have all this preparation done before. So stick to the process, um, follow, follow this process and make sure that you start thinking about it 90, uh, uh, nine months before you actually wanna start living and studying in Japan. Okay, so uh, we send the blood test. Yes. You have sent the blood test. Okay, what, what, so what happens you send after? the blood test and now begins the 180 day waiting period, which is six months. So that's why you need to make sure you have it nine months in advance because there's a six month, you from the time that you draw the pet's blood, there has to be six months between that day and your departure to Japan. Hmm. And then as I said, there was a one month waiting period between the rabies vaccines. So that's why, that's why it's so long. So now begins the six month waiting period. And in this waiting period, um, technically, the, the, the next step in this process is to notify the Japanese government that you're bringing your pet hmm. formally. You'll be doing this formally, um, either from fax or, or traditional like mail. But I actually scanned the documents to them and emailed it to them, and it was much easier for me. And they have their contact list on that website, their email. So if you have access or if you have the ability to scan the documents and email it to them, it's much faster to just go back and forth. So this is like a um, super insight because um, if you check the official instructions, they ask you to fax. Because fax or mail. You guys need to know that in Japan, they still use the fax. F-A-X, they still use the fax. <laughs> and it's, it's like something that uh, maybe in your country is not common anymore. Uh, but in Japan, it's common. So actually, companies exchange faxes uh, nowadays. And sometimes, you know, Gogo Nihon is asked to send 
access to schools, access to university, access to immigration, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So don't be surprised if you deal with Japan and they ask you for sending documents in this way. Uh, the alternative is to send them by mail, but that's another... Oh, it takes so long. Yeah, it takes way it, too long. Exactly. It's another extra uh, overhead, you know, extra work, extra time, extra risk of mm. something getting lost. Yes. You don't want to do that. But if you um, check the, the site with the instruction, there, there is an email and you try to contact the person. Uh, it, there is a possibility. We don't know for sure because it's not written in the instruction, but in right. your case, it worked. I, I they just, accepted it. I just email. I just saw the email. So I just sent an email asking... Okay, I'm at this stage in the process where I, I need to um, send my notification form. Um, can I send it to you by email? And they just said yes. So I just scanned it to them, sent it. I mean, they'll, they'll communicate with you. So they'll tell you what you need to do, if it's, if it's okay or not. Mm -hmm. And they actually were very informative about what I needed to do as well. Like, they were really helpful. So if you, if you have questions about the whole process, they'll answer it for you. Um, but the, that notifying the Japanese government is a bit later because mm. that's, you don't have to do that. You have to do that at least 40 days before your flight. Okay, but right now we're in the six month waiting period, so right. you have a long time to mm. do that. Mm. So after sending the blood test away, my next um, step that I would advise, it's not technically part of the process, but um, would be to, first you need to wait for your results to come back. It takes about a month. Make sure they're good. They probably are. Mine, you have to have, the um, blood test has to be um, greater than 0.5 IU per milliliter. Mm. So that's just a measurement that, that, like I said, measures the antibodies against rabies. So mine was way above that. Um, yours will probably be fine. So once it's okay, I would suggest booking your flight and your accommodation in Japan. Um, just to do that as soon as, as soon as you can, just to make sure that that's settled. Mm. And that's another big yes. part of the process. Yes. That's not none of that information is going to be on the, that website I told you because it's it's a separate thing. It's not you know, booking to them. Your flight. They yeah. tell you. How what to do to bring your pet to Japan, but right. then guaranteeing the flight and accommodation, it's uh, it's your next work right. basically as, an, as a pet owner. But it's okay. another whole, a whole different thing that you mm. have to take care of. So mm. I actually brought my cat with me in cabin. She was in the cabin with me. Okay, how did you do that? Because I always had a, I mean, um, likely for me, um, you know, I, actually found but my, my cat is from uh, is from japan so i didn't have to go through this process mm. uh he's, he's japanese he's japanese and he's always been in japan right. so i didn't go through this this process but when i thinking about people bringing their pets i think about putting the cat with uh, with the cargo. baggages which may, make me of course feel very uncomfortable me however too. you told me that you know he was in a cabin with you uh, i think it depends on the size first of all but also depends on some special yes uh, airlines how did you work so First of all, you sh you need to research airlines that allow pets in cabin because obviously, okay. and and um, certain airlines are different, like depending on the destination. I see. Okay. So if so, some airlines might say you can we have pets in cabin, but not to Hawaii, mm -hmm. for example. So sure. so just make sure that all of that checks out. I flew with Delta, mm -hmm. um, and I had my pet in cabin. So I only really know Delta's rules because I yeah, like studied that's, them. Yeah, because that's what you did. And you Google it, right? That's, just yes. to make everyone aware. So for example, if you don't have Delta in your country, if you don't want to take Delta or you, you right. can still Google of course, your, of your, your airline airlines. of choice. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. There are other airlines. But let's, let's, uh, let's talk about what was required by Delta because okay. that's very interesting for me yeah, as well. Yeah. Maybe one day well, I want to bring my cat to Europe, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it's really important that you just know their rules and they can actually be really hard to find mm. i think it's because they don't really want pets in cabin because yeah. like you know sometimes other people don't want to be around pets or, or whatever but um it can be a little bit hard to find so there was a lot of times i actually just called delta and asked them yeah, you'll probably yeah. need to do that mm. and i just prepared very far in advance that's why i'm suggesting this now because at the beginning of your six month waiting period mm. if you start planning it then you'll have plenty of time to figure all of this out okay yeah, and yeah. um with delta Delta's rule was that um, four pets are allowed in cabin, mm -hmm. actually, um, oh. per flight, I think. Okay. Um, and um, there's there was a, I think it was about two hundred dollar fee for okay. like for for the flight, like that's for her. For cheaper flight. than a person. Yeah. Cheaper than a kid, right? Yeah. So it's it's not bad. But I think it's fair. But in the beginning, when I said you needed at least a thousand dollars, that's included. Like everything right. I'm talking about, okay. the flight and everything is included. The, the visit, in the, is the shipping, and, right. and, and and also the the flight itself is right. at least a thousand dollars. Yes. Okay. So um, I just you just have to contact them far in advance if you know which flight you want to take and tell them I have a cat I want or a dog and I want to bring my pet on the flight. Um, and if if four people haven't already booked their pet on that flight then you'll be you'll be able to mm -hmm. as long as your pet is small enough to fit that's a whole other thing is yeah. that 
Um, so your pet carrier has to fit under the seat in front of you, obviously. Uh, so, <laughs> so what I did was I found the flight that I wanted, the flights that I wanted, and I called them and asked them what the measurements under the seat right. were so that I could find out what my maximum size was. And then they told me, and then I went out and bought a soft-sided carrier. They recommended soft-sided yes, because, because they can it, bend mm -hmm. um, that fit those dimensions and make sure that they fit the dimensions of all the flights you'll be taking because you'll probably be taking more than one. Oh, Maybe. right. Because, I take more than one. Yeah, because you may exchange. It's not direct right. flight, and, and, and you want to make sure <laughs> you don't want to arrive midpoint. Like you have an, yeah. an exchange flight in Moscow, which is very common for European. There is one company that uh, uh, have the exchange in Moscow uh, or, you know, Helsinki, and then you have to, <laughs> to leave like your cat big, there. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't speak Russian or, or feel like <laughs> your cat. You wanna you wanna go all the way to with you exactly. to, to Japan. Okay. So you just make sure that you. So I asked them for the the dimensions. Then I made sure I got a carrier that fit those dimensions. Then I called them back and officially booked my cat on the flight because once you book it. To book your pet, you have to tell them the dimensions of your carrier. Right. So you have to know the dimensions of your carrier before you book it. So it's kind of like a, yeah. you know, it's, it, you have to, it's kind of difficult. Because if your carrier is too big to begin with, then obviously you need a new one. Mm -hmm. So just anyway, I recommend asking for the dimensions of your specific flight yeah. and buying a carrier that fits mm -hmm. it. Unless you already have a really nice carrier, then maybe it will fit. And, and in case you exchange emails or, or phone, record the call. Save the email because in case they say you later, this is nothing fit. You told oh, me that there was a dimension. That's another thing is that actually I booked my cat on the flight, but when I checked my like itinerary yeah. and everything online, there was nothing about a pet. Yeah. Because and, and I was I would kept calling and saying, wait, she's still on the flight, right? And they're like, yes, you're traveling with your cat, but it, there was no documentation, there was no receipt. So don't be worried. In that case, you you have all the the information saved. Make sure that you have you know a backup in case a backup plan in case you go to the airport and right. they say. Oh, the, 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 if the you cat can, was, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I think that would yes. be better. Just to, also for you to be yes. more safe yeah, and, and, and comfortable going there. Because I was so worried since I didn't have any proof that I booked my cat mm -hmm. on the flight. I was so worried that I would arrive and they would say, oh, you don't have a cat. And so I, you know, wow. but anyway, it was okay. It worked and they knew. And, and, and how was the, the actual, I don't know if you want to add any uh, other information, but I'm curious about how is the process of going to the airport and checking in? Like, is it? Normal, it something. was okay. Yeah, it was just... Um, I just, I, I just had to take my cat out for a second to go through the metal detector. Oh, you, so you bring? I was thinking you don't bring the, you, you don't pass the cat down <laughs> with, the, with the baggage. You actually take it out, no, and yeah, then, yeah. and then we did. That's super mm -hmm. cute. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so I guess if your cat would freak out in that instance, just make sure. Some people talk about like medicating their pe their mm -hmm. cat or sedating it somehow. I didn't do that, and mm. my cat was totally fine. But my cat's pretty calm. Yeah. So it depends on the personality of your pet. Exactly. You know your the personality of your pet, so you can prepare in advance in that sense too. Yes. Okay. And um, I also recommend, I, I, I just tried to be as prepared as possible. So I had, um, you know, little like toilet pads in the in the carrier just in case. I had a collapsible pet mm. bowl for her so I could give her water, even though she didn't drink or eat anything. I was just trying to like prepare as much as possible. And if you Google things like um, traveling, oh, like, a 12 plus hour flight with your cat then mm -hmm. it you'll you'll find a lot of like tips and tricks okay. to to prepare you okay so you are basically on the flight now and then i believe the the hardest part is done but then you were talking about the flight and also the accommodation that's the other thing we want to talk about right we want to so the flight is booked and, and then and then you know you have uh, uh, you pay these 200 dollars extra your your airline has, has four spots to let your pet in and you book before other people so you have you have your spot you book your flight ticket and that's not going to be a problem but also you need to make sure that you have accommodation yes that and allows pet to stay because in japan that's pretty rare and i mentioned the notification form that you send to the japanese government so it's 40 days before the before your departure mm -hmm. so that's why i'm saying before then you have to figure all these things out because on that notification form you have to put what address you'll be living in. You have to put which flight you'll be taking, where you'll be arriving. So you need to know all these things before you notify the Japanese government. So, as I said, basically, from the time you get your blood test results, that's when you should start booking your flight, your accommodation. Um, those, those are the two So the accommodation things. has to be booked uh, at least 40 days before coming to Japan. Um, well, when, you have to notify the Japanese government with your accommodation on it. Mm-hmm within 40 days so you would need to actually set up the accommodation like before that before that which is again another um 
challenge, I would say, because usually in Japan, you know, like 30 days, 40 days is, is usually the time you actually right. book an apartment. I, you, yeah. don't, you don't book an apartment that early, like right. 60 days or 70 days. Uh, so that makes extra difficult. So first of all, you need to find an apartment that um, allows pet, which in, in Japan, I would say are like 5%. I don't want to scare you guys, but that's how common in, in Japan. It's not common to, um, especially in the cities, like let's say you want to live in Tokyo, you don't want to live two hours far from the school, of course, especially in the city. Um, very few apartments uh, have the, the possibility to have pets and first of all you need to find which one have and then you need to convince I guess the, uh, the owner or the agency to um, book the apartment for you to, to, to reserve the apartment for you maybe a couple of months in advance. Right. How did you do that? My, I was very fortunate because my boyfriend lives in Tokyo he's, he's lived in Japan for eight years so he already had an apartment that allowed pets okay. so I was really lucky in that regard um, so if basically if you have if you for some reason mm. have someone in Japan that could vouch for you or and that could you know that would allow you to put their address on this form then that would help you out a lot because you could just you could put that address on there and let and maybe stay with that person for a little while until and then actually come to Japan and find an apartment mm. that allows pets that would be easier um, for sure that would I think that would be the most and and uh, you know um, if you if you guys of course come to Japan with Google Nihon you can always ask uh, ask us and, and, and let us know about uh, your needs in terms of apartments and part of the Google Nihon free support service is that we look for apartments for you and we do our best and especially if you need a specific solution like an apartment for um, that allows pets and you need to reserve way in advance I think you wanna you want to get the type of support so we can we can definitely help you guys uh, there are uh, most of the things that Haley said in her um, in her, instru in her instru the instructions she gave us are things you need to do by yourself. Just because um, Google Nihon, you know, cannot go to your country, cannot uh, get those visits and those uh, vaccines done for you. But uh, in terms of um, things in Japan, we can definitely support you as best as we can. So uh, you can always ask us about uh, help with the apartment. Um, okay. So we have the apartment set. Uh, we have the flight set. Is there anything else we should uh, we should worry at this point, or most of the things are done? Actually, as far as the six month waiting period mm -hmm. and how that goes, um, that's going to be the bulk of it. So after you after you set your flight and your accommodation, you can then notify the Japanese government. It's it's at least forty days, but you can do it before then, and I recommend doing it as soon mm -hmm. as possible. So as soon as you get your blood test results back. You book your flight, you find out your accommodation, and then you notify the Japanese government mm -hmm. just back to back, so doing it as soon as possible. Hmm. And then the Japanese government will review your notification form. This is step six, by the way, sending the notification form, because it's a formal form. Um, it's not just an email saying, hey, I'm bringing my pet to Japan. Um, so you, you give them all of this information, and then they, if they have any issues with it, you may have to fix it. That's what you always have to keep in mind is is that you should do things as soon as possible because at any point there could be some issue where you have to take more time to correct it. So um, you'll notify the Japanese government and then they will send you an approval form and that's a separate form. That's step seven, receiving that approval form. Very important to have that. They'll check for it once you arrive in Japan. You need to have it. Um, and then after that, um, if you're still, like, if you still have a few months to go before your flight, there's really nothing you can do. Um, just take care of all that as soon as possible. Um, notifying the Japanese government, receiving your approval form, and then from there, all you really can do is wait. You can't do anything else until the about a week before you leave. Um, I think it's technically 10 days before you leave. Um, you need to do the next steps that I'll talk about, um, but they actually recommend two days before you leave, but I don't recommend it because I underestimated how complicated the last few steps would be and I did it of course but um, I would recommend doing everything as soon as you can um, and you'll see those specific days the amount of days that you need to do it in on that website um, but as I said uh, I think it's technically at least 10 days before about a week before you'll need to move on to the next phase which is kind of the crunch time it's like right before you leave mm. um, so that step step eight would be a final vet inspection you have to take your pet to the vet one more time um, and fill out these two forms, forms A and C, which um, the Japanese government actually sent them to me in the email with the approval form, but you can also find them on that website. Mm -hmm. So you take those forms to the vet and you complete those forms at the vet. I think you can complete form A yourself, but then the vet completes form C. 
Um, so they're basically checking your pet, making sure that it's still healthy, it's not having any adverse reactions to the rabies vaccines that you gave to it. And um, after you complete those forms, you will need to have those documents stamped by your home government. Um, and this is what I said, I underestimated because, mm -hmm. um, as I said, this is about a week before you leave, so you only have a couple days. And you'll have to send these forms to a specific government entity. It's listed on the, I forgot what it's called, but okay. it's listed on the, on that website. So you have to, you have to pay for, or I had to pay for overnight shipping there. And I also had to pay for the overnight shipping to come back to me. And this is, there is no way to do this earlier. It's just the way it is. Exactly. It's just to... Because I'm the type of person that would do it in a way, as far in advance as I can. Right. And I was just forced to wait until a week okay. before because they have a strict um, policy that you do this within the week of leaving. Mm. Mm. So, so I, as I said, I had to pay for overnight shipping there. I think I had to pay for them to, to just stamp it, to go through it, approve it, mm -hmm. and then for them to send it back to me overnight. And then once you have those forms, you're finally good to go. Mm. You're finally like nothing to worry about. Um, as long as you can just go ahead and get to the airport, get on your flight, make it through, land in Japan. And then once you land, you'll need to pass an, a quick import inspection at the airport. That's step 10. And really all you do is just um, go up to the counter. It's right by the baggage claim. And they'll just kind of take your cat or dog into like a, a little like vet room and they'll just kind of make sure that it's okay. And then they'll check your documents, your right. specific documents that they're checking. Um, so obviously throughout this whole process, save all of your documents, but they're only checking, I think about three to five. Okay, but those are documents like, you know, can be easily found. The documents you need to bring there are, you know, you, you knew in advance, of course, exactly, you know, so yeah. you can prepare easily. So the arrival actually, because I was also, I would have been very worried about the arrival. What's going to happen yeah. if suddenly... What if they say no? They say yeah, no so or, or a super extra check is done again and then they can still say yes or no. But, uh, but if you've done everything all right and uh, you, get, uh, you get the documents you need, you just get out the plane like you would go with, with your pet with you and then you just go on an extra row, I would say, uh, you, you, when you, you pass you just the pick immigration. Up, yes, you just pick up your baggage yeah. as normal and then after you pick up your baggage, it's it's near the baggage claim at least in narita airport mm -hmm. and then um they do take them into like a little vet room okay. and they just kind of look them over though it's a not really bit, yeah. yeah i mean yeah. And if you're if your pet is like relatively healthy it's going to be okay but technically <laughs> they can technically they could um... they could say no but you know if you've done everything and they're aware that you're coming and they're aware that you've had the rabies vaccine and the blood test done mm -hmm. then you know that's what you're supposed to do so after that point um you know, I could just go to my apartment from there. Okay. Yeah, okay. it was how, really simple. Uh, I want to ask you also how the pet reacted to the change of envir environment. Before <laughs> I do that, there is also one question, and uh, I was actually able to uh, to put the photos of our cats. So um, you guys can see the photo of Haley's cat and my cat. Uh, Haley's cat name is? Botan. Botan Chan. Botan Chan. And my cat is Cacino. Um, is a is a he and she's a oh, she, yes, right? She, yes. Okay, so that's that's also very very nice. And you can see the <laughs> photos of our pets. Um, of course, I require you to like them because I really I really uh, I'm gonna show to my cat how many likes he got <laughs> after <laughs> this. Yes, and and please also share the photo of your pet if you like. That would be nice to uh, to see. Uh, guys, again, if you have questions, you can ask. There is one question uh, from uh, from Manny Garcia that is is, is talking about housing. Uh, and buying a an house from outside the country. Um, I mean, if you want to buy a house in Japan for investment or for, for other reasons, of course, uh, feel free to do. However, um, you know, there is no need to buy a house. You can rent it. And as I said, although it's very difficult to uh, find specific house uh, that I love, uh, um, that can have pets, if you do your research in advance and if you ask for Google your own help, uh, you may pay a little bit more because just the choice is mm. so little. You may pay a little bit more. You may have less choice. You know, it's not going to be 15 minutes maybe walk to the school. It's going to be a, you need to, you know, you need, you need to commute. Uh, however, it's possible. So if you do all your preparation and you are, uh, you understand that you have less choice and maybe pay a little bit more, we can find and you can find 
a, a, a rental accommodation like, like everyone else, uh, even in cities like Tokyo, uh, Kyoto, Osaka, that maybe are, um, you know, there are, there are more people there. So accommodation is always uh, a little bit uh, hard to find. So absolutely no worries. You don't have to buy a house. Of course, if you want to buy your own house, then it's different. If you, if you want to buy your own house, Usually in Japan, you have two choices. One, you buy a separate house and then you can do whatever you want. It's your house, it's your area. You can do whatever you want. If you buy a house, they say in Japan, in a mansion, in a condominium, mm -hmm. uh, then you may still not able to do it if the condominium rules are not pets. So you want to be 100% sure, even if you buy a house, you may think it's going to be okay, but then uh, the condominium rules say no, no, no pets and then it's your house, I own it you cannot yeah. have a pet so be very careful especially if you want to buy a house but i would say rent is probably what most of the people would be would be interested to you wanna, and actually i was yeah. just going to add um this isn't how i did the process but i have heard of people um actually starting this process then moving to japan while their pet lives with their family oh. member back in their home country and then they simply go back so obviously you start the process, then you move to Japan by yourself without your pet. Mm. You find an apartment that allows pets. I see. And then you're living there, and then you're you're waiting for the, that six month waiting period in the middle. Mm. And then once that gets down towards the end, and you're having to do the last few steps, you would go back to your home country, just pick up the pet, and then bring it back. Now I didn't do that, so it's kind of hard for me to like recommend it or anything. But in but in theory, it, yeah. it seems like very doable it makes sense especially if you have someone that can take care of your pet in your house instead of doing these nine months in advance and maybe really struggling to find an apartment that you cannot see yet yeah uh, as to be uh pets friendly etc 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 you can just come to japan as soon as you can maybe apply for the next visa in that case would be in our case could be even october because we still accept applications for october visas you come in october to japan um, and then you um, start the procedure, of course, right mm -hmm. now. So at least it's not going to be that late. And then maybe your pet is ready to come to Japan in January, February. And that's when you fly back. And you'll uh, spend about a week there doing those last few things. You spend the last week, like, like Haley said, you get the last few things. And then you fly again to Japan with your pet. And then in the meantime, from October to January, you would have found already an apartment for the pets. So that make, maybe make more sense for yeah. most of the people. Yeah, true. Um, unless you don't have a place where you're pet can stay that's, exactly. that's of course some people have this problem second you don't want to separate a single second <laughs> with your pet that that also could be something that some people have so in that case you need to go through the full procedure that Ailey has described um do you want to add uh, something or we can uh, or we can or i can ask you about how is life now with the pet in japan um how about i just recap the steps yes i think that's very useful because i i kind of explained i, I explained them as i went so step one get a microchip Step two, get the first rabies vaccine. You'll wait about a month. Then step three, get the second rabies vaccine. Um, and then have your pet's blood drawn. Step five, send the blood test to the lab in order to test the antibodies. Um, then begins the six month waiting period. Step six would be at least 40 days before your flight to notify the Japanese government. Step seven is receiving the approval form from them. And then within a week of leaving, um, step eight would be taking your pet to the final inspection where you'll complete forms A and C. Step nine is having those documents stamped by your home government. And then you'll fly to Japan, and the last step would be passing the import inspection in the airport. Fantastic. It seems easy, like hearing from you right now with, when you say the steps in a row, but it's not, guys. So you need to prepare in advance, uh, nine months in advance, it's suggested, or you come as soon as you can, you start the procedure now, you come as soon as you can, and then you fly back to Japan, to, you fly back to your country to do the last week prepar last week work, and then you bring your pet in Japan afterwards. Mm. Um, so first of all, I wanna really say thank you very much to Haley's okay. because this information I've, I've searched, because every time before I do a live, I don't wanna do a live about something that is already there. I don't wanna talk about something that people can already find just Googling. There are information, of course, if you Google about this, but there are here and there. There is nothing like what you did right now. And I'm sure a lot of people that are thinking to bring the pet into Japan, if they find this video, will find extremely helpful. You're going to save a lot of time and you're going to help more and more pet owner to be uh, with their beloved uh, yes. dog or cat or what's their pet in a fantastic country like Japan. So that's, I think, is going to be very, very helpful. So I want, uh, I want personally to thank you and oh. I want everyone that enjoyed this video to send a like to, to Haley. Leave us a comment if you like this video. And again, you can ask us any question afterwards. Uh, the great news, which I don't think we have mentioned yet, is actually Haley uh, came 
uh, to Japan as a Gogonion student. Uh, she's from America, but also will be a Gogonion staff. Is yes. a Gogonion staff already, yes, yes. actually. Uh, she's going to work in marketing for Gogonion. Uh, and and so she's always going to be here. And if you guys have questions again about bringing your pet to Japan, we can always access to Haley's knowledge at any time. So she will be the one replying to the comments. For example, you leave to this video on YouTube and on Facebook. So that's that's I think is very very important for you guys. So before we uh, wrap up this live and we see if uh, there are the last uh, live questions to answer, I want to know how is life in Japan uh, with uh, with your cat. It's great. I mean, I think she likes Japan. My cat is not an outdoor cat. She only stays inside. So sometimes I wonder if she even knows that we're in a different country or in a different... Because I also moved around a lot in America, so she's used to moving and being in different spaces. But she's she's been great. She just, you know, as a cat does, she just sits in the sun and, yeah. you know, tries to stay cool. She, she loves it. Is she studying Japanese? <laughs> well, her name's Japanese. So okay, so she, I think she, I think she just already knows it. She just okay. you know understands. Botan, I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you were inspired by the anime for the. For oh the yeah, that's right. I named I named her Botan after um, Yu Yu Hakusho. Do you know that anime? I, I don't know okay, personally, it's, but it's like a little. It's like a boys anime, but it was like it's my favorite anime, okay. and I, I used to watch it in America. So actually, the Grim Reaper character, she's a very cute girl with mm -hmm. blue hair. Her name's Botan. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's why so I wanted to that. name her that. Yeah. Okay, very, very cute. What's uh, the name? What's the name behind Scratchino? Uh, it's because, uh, so I'm from Italy, and Italian people used to put Eno at the end of words. So mm. with my with, with my wife, we decided to call it uh, Scratchino because he always scratches from the very first day. We actually, is, is a, used to be, a, how do you say, like a street cat? He used right. to be outside. Oh, like a wild cat. Yeah, a wild cat. And he was getting cold, and we, we saw that he was getting sick. But we get a really, um, how do you say, we... When we, were, when we were getting back home each uh, day, he was always kind of waiting for us or waiting for people living in that area, just scratching his back <laughs> or something against the door or against your leg. And then every, every, every day we come back home, we find him, and he just scratches. And then, of course, he's a street, a street cat. And then we, we, didn't, we never you know, brought, him uh, in. brought him in. You, know, you, you don't do that. But then when he was getting cold, we saw he was getting sick. And then everything started. We brought him to the hospital. Then we couldn't find a place for him to stay. We decided to bring him home. And, and, and now he's super him. healthy. Yeah. yeah, he's super healthy and super happy. And um, he tends to wake up us a lot at night. You oh, know? Yeah. But that's, I think, is typical for cats. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I told my cat that we had a live show. Uh, this morning <laughs> so we need to be very energetic and, and awake and then he was all night on the bed just just talking to me and then at 8 a.m he just end up sleeping right and, and then it was time i had to wake up to to come uh, to the office but that, that's you know it's, it's typical it, yeah it's very typical um <laughs> how old is scratchy now uh, the doctor said he's uh oh yeah was, you wouldn't know he's yeah wild. it was right, four right. years when we adopted oh, okay uh, so it's four years and a, and a half now i would say okay. so because you never know the exact age right. when, when you adopt a cat right what about uh, botan she's actually seven okay. she just turned seven years old okay. nice so yeah. she moved to japan when she was six. six yeah she actually when like when we landed in japan it was just a few days before her seventh birthday okay so, so. she's <laughs> kind of lined up like that okay, so she's so you... just turned seven very nice very but, nice um, Mm. So uh, guys, we are looking for seeing uh, the photos of your pets because we we put on the on the on the chat the photos of our pets. If you haven't seen them, uh, you can just scroll down. Sometimes Facebook doesn't show them. I don't know how this works. We never tried this before, but uh, but I can see I can see the photos sometimes. I can I don't see them some other times. But just uh, uh, I think after the live show, the, when when the video stays online, you you guys can all all see our our two cats and let us know if you like them of course let us know if you have any question Haley uh, since is part of the uh, Google Neon team now will be checking the um, the chat the, the comments on Facebook and YouTube and we'll be keep answering you guys so any questions you have there is actually um, Rene that is saying it was very informative and then Martin is asking a question is there any dog breed that you can bring to Japan uh, I, I, I think depend also maybe on, on the size and the type of breed. I don't know if you know something right. about it. So since I brought a cat, I don't know that that well, but definitely look at that website because if there is a breed that's prohibited, then it will say, and hmm. it's a pretty good question because I have heard of apartments in Japan prohibiting certain breeds of dogs, right? And I think um, the main thing is if it's a large breed, uh, hmm. that's, that's going to be the most difficult in terms of, in terms of, um, the flight, mm. unless you're okay with having your pet in cargo, mm. but in terms of accommodation, that's mm. going to be the most difficult thing. So if it's mm. a large breed, 
um, then you you would need to look at the specifics on the website to yeah. see. And I, I would imagine since the rules of the airlines are that you you need to stay you know in uh, under the seat in front of you if it's a, if it's a large size the only choice would be cargo. Cargo, yes. 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 And then, and then of course something you, you also need to think if you want to do or not. Um, and and there is a link, um, Martin. There is a link that Haley put as a first comment of this. Uh, uh, of this live show and that's where you find the information she said and I, I think you know with some um, research mm -hmm. this type of question can be answered yes. because I'm sure there is a list of yes. uh, allowed and not allowed breed and another thing about dogs is that um, with cats they're only checking for rabies mm. but there was another disease with dogs I can't remember the name it's a long word it starts with L mm. they're also checking for that with okay. dogs so just keep that in mind it's the same process in general for dogs mm -hmm. that I just explained um, but they're just also checking for this other disease. Um, so it's just slightly different. Just yeah. So you know. And of course, depending on, on the breed or the type of pet you want to bring, and you want to bring a rabbit, you want to bring yeah. a, something hamster, you want to bring something else, <laughs> um, the procedure may change a little bit. So what Ailey went through is uh, Specific specifically for America. her pet, for an American cat yes. that want to live and study in Japan because yes, it was your yes. cat choice right yes. it's not your choice your cat yes. said I want to live and study in oh. Japan yeah <laughs> right yeah <laughs> um, so I had to do yes, it yes you had to do it so this is a cat uh, from America going to Japan uh, and the reason why we did this even though this is specific is because first of all I think 80 90 percent will be the same for uh, other pets from other countries second is because it gives you an idea of it's possible but also you need to do this type of uh, vaccine and preparation about uh, nine months in advance so you guys all, all are aware and you can start looking and the good the best place to start looking is the website that Haley has linked at the beginning of the comments uh, there is Aruna that is asking how, how do I put a photo I don't know since I couldn't do for at least 30 minutes then I could do and now I cannot do again I think Facebook live with photos attachments is still like kind of buggy uh, I imagine I'm not sure that at the end of this um, live show when the video stays people can go back to this to this video and they can normally comment and attach photos but I'm not 100% sure but uh, I will check later and if you guys want to uh, attach your photo the photo of your pet and share with us it would be very nice please wait the end of this live show and try to do this again uh, but I think we we said everything. Yeah, I think it was extremely informative. So again, thank you very much for Haley. Of course, Haley. I, was, I love to help. I mean, I was in your position of looking for like more information about this process. So I'm happy to share. Absolutely. And and if you guys enjoy this live sh uh, live show, please leave us a, a like and even a comment saying that you enjoyed it and share with everyone that you know is thinking to go to Japan and maybe as a pet because I think this information is there is nowhere. Uh, available and uh, they would definitely definitely uh, are very interested in in knowing about what Haley just said again guys thank you very much this is the go neon live show and we'll see you next week on monday 11 a.m from japan thank you guys bye